Jason Dude, that and, part and of Philadelphia is underrated, right? Everyone knows about uh, Detroit. A lot of people know about bad parts of San Fran or St. Louis, but the worst parts of Philadelphia rank with anywhere on the planet. Like, it, I had a friend who was friends with a cop, and he was like, "Where's the worst place in Philadelphia?" And he's like, "K and A, the corner of Kensington and Arlington. The prostitutes there will do things for less than five dollars." It's like, whoa, what a fucking metric. Wow. For- Less than five dollars. Yeah. You wouldn't inflation want proof. <laughs> <laughs> Mitt, how much is your Mitt, how much is your fans like? Uh starting price is uh ten at the lowest tier. There so See, yeah. Some self-respect. You know, <laughs> I actually stayed You won't in- find her on K and A. No. I stayed no. in a I've, ugh, I stayed in a really um terrible place in Philly because I don't know. Philly. And so there was a there is the there was the who are these podcasts of the dick show live show there mm-hmm. and I was like okay well I'm just going to pick an Airbnb and I ended up picking an Airbnb in the top 5 like the uh, the five it was like number 5 on the highest crime in <laughs> Philly and I was like oh no and, okay so here's here's how the Airbnb was three separate locks a lock on the door to get into the airbnb and then a lock it to get to the floor where the airbnb was and then a lock to get into the actual airbnb and there was a camera within the living room of the airbnb yeah and i was like this is Uh, there were cameras in every room i'm sure yeah yeah, yeah, that's just the one you saw yeah there was a little yeah. one thermostat. The was for wide, that one's for wide shots. Yeah, <laughs> establishing and, frames and such. <laughs> and it was a, uh, it was pretty ridiculous. There was just like people walking, uh, like jaywalking across the street all the time. There was a lot of people who were. It seemed like they were bugging out. Like they would, they would be like acting pretty erratically. I was a little bit scared, but uh, yeah, Atlanta is more violent you, than you druggy. Be. Yeah, like yeah, when I, drug addict. Sometimes I'll get off. I'm I'm bad about missing my exit. Like. I, I'll do it a lot. Um, and, Are you driving uh, Mach one when this happens, I go pretty fast. They don't pull you yeah. over for speeding in Atlanta, and I'm past my court. Good shift, to know. So, so now it's like you're gonna do write me a ticket. I'll pay it. I haven't had one in 12 years. You'll probably mm-hmm. let me slide. Um, so I'll drive like 100 pretty regularly. Like that's kind of my cruising speed. And never been pulled over. That's wow. insane. Those are motorcycle rules. <laughs> it's kind of my cruising. I, I promise you. Like if you're on I, if you're on 285. It's a problem to pull someone over on that thing. There's nowhere to go. You get on that shoulder. Yeah, hop out of your car, officer, and and Indiana Jones side straddle uh, between the the hundred mile per hour traffic because everybody's doing it in the fast lane anyway. Um, missed my uh, and I I went down a scary fucking place, but it it was more like violent than druggy, you know, like like it was more like I saw a lot of people on stoops with 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 liquor bottles out in public mm-hmm. and i saw a lot of like there was a lot of yelling in general it was it was loud there you ever go to a place and like you're just at a gas station making a u-turn it's like why is everyone shouting uh i have that experience <laughs> you can smell weed with, in the air with <laughs> la I, I went i was i was in a part of uh downtown la trying to get gas i i pull into this gas station and there's just like like 10 people just loitering there and there's a couple having an argument and like uh, uh, oh i'm almost out of gas i don't want to stop here because i don't want to deal with the people yelling like i have noise sensitivity issues so if i were to be next to a person yelling i just start freaking out and just like start stemming and then people would be like what are you doing doing lady also my first ever experience being catcalled was in the same place in philly that i stayed in that airbnb oh, like what that was, was his yeah. what was his line what was his go-to <laughs> it was just three honks on a oh, on in the that's car respectful. yeah that's like my <laughs> he, only he just wanted to get out of the street i was on the sidewalk but uh so when i was i crossed the street and then when i uh when I was on the other side of the sidewalk, just going to my car, he honked. Then he was crossing the street. When he was crossing the street, just going forward, and I was going towards my car, he honked again, and then he honked a third time. I think he shouted, like, hey, mama, you look good. You look fine, like, towards me uh, on the around, like, the third honk. I was like, I'm just going to ignore it. I have other things to do. 
I'm not was, here. Was to, part of you feeling this. like, yeah, I am killing it today? <laughs> yeah, I was like, huh. I've. I was just thinking to myself, this is the only time I've ever been catcalled. I there's so many people. Sorry, uh, there's so many people who say it's a, such a big issue that I like people online say it's such a big issue with them. But personally, it's only happened to me once. So I don't know. I don't yeah. know how what type of people do you are go out a these lot. Are, do you go out a lot, though? Um, not often. Yeah. But when I am in the big city, I I dress up. I dress real sexy. I'm in, my ass is hanging out. The only thing that's obstructing my ass from the real world is just some uh, lime green fish nets. And that's just <laughs> how I'm looking. So, I, I mean, I understand people honking, cat calling me. I yeah. expect that. You really can't say much, gang. You're walking around point. in lime green fish nets. They're honking at you. And you're like, what about how I'm dressed tells you that's the kind of attention I'm looking for. Her shirt says honk if you love titties. It's Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like I'm wearing stuff like that. And it was like the only time where I've been cat calling. I'm like, huh. This is, I, maybe I'm not going out enough. Like, I don't. I only go out yeah, whenever it. I'm doing like big events. Like if there's like a yeah. live show and I go to the city and I walk around. Also, I walk around in groups too. So that also helps. It's probably a good so, idea. Safety. Yeah, yeah definitely. Safety you look tiny. First. Somebody can like snatch would... you up and run away with you. Aren't you five seven? I am five seven. Uh, I, oh. I am fiercer than I look. I will bite. I will kick. I have four years of Taekwondo training underneath my belt. So I know how to kick. And I know how the best place to punch someone is in their penis. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So you're unless they're in the cock and ball torture, and uh, then you're in trouble, <laughs> oh, madam. Uh, still the best place. Just in case, I think you stick with the group plan. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I. I, I see. Right, so you did. You do. You still do taekwondo, or you're out of um, out of practice. I'm out of practice. I did taekwondo from. Uh, First and second grade, and then seventh through ninth grade. That was when I did Taekwondo. I still know the fu uh, basic fundamental stuff like stance and uh, the kicks because I've done it so many times. I just know how to do it so, intuitively. So what would but... happen if a man tried to pin you down? Would he be in deep trouble? You think? Or yes, I I'm I'm slippery. I would <laughs> I would I would make a flail my arms around the windmill um, right right i would do like woo, woo. yeah that's oft seen in the ufc ah, <laughs> you know your taekwondo well <laughs> I, I have a daughter and it's a balancing act. well we it's better a, get like, out of here this, this bitch is trained it. <laughs> it's, it's like you want to on one hand let them know they're a strong woman who you know has like i don't know worth and strength and and you know don't back Agency. down. On the other hand, but don't really do that. <laughs> that's that's mm -hmm. not a good plan. Bring a gun. Just yeah, run. Right? If you um, can, run. If yeah, you can, I, run. Yeah, you do you have a run. gun? You, you I gonna... don't have a gun. No. You got to get strapped Aren't you up. you in L.A.? Um, no, I'm in Kentucky. Get a oh, gun. You're, you're the only <laughs> one without a gun. You're in a <laughs> huge <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I'm oh, away. Can't you get like a mail-in concealed carry in Kentucky? <laughs> Am I guessing? No, I actually never it's, looked it's into it. It's constitutional carry. Just, just like, like, oh my god, just, just go get you know, one. Right. There's really mm -hmm. no concealing in that outfit. It's, it's, although, it's open carry. <laughs> although Laura um, Croft. Ooh, Laura Croft is with a gun with yeah, a fun, fun cosplay idea, actually. Um, but okay, my my only exposure to like actual firing a gun because. Mm -hmm. I don't have much experience firing guns, but I did have uh, my friend Eric Wong, who is a gun instructor, teach me how to fire a gun. And I have a very fun story about this. Mm -hmm. So I was being taught, like, okay, you got, you have the proper gun stuff. Okay, you got to all hold down. Fire when you're ready. And when he said fire, I fired the gun. Before he finished the sentence, I said, I just fired the gun. He was like, oh. I wasn't finished with my sentence. Uh, Premature <laughs> like, detonation. Oh. That happens to first timers. Yeah. I, I guess I was just really <laughs> excited to fire the gun, but that taught me a lesson to not act immediately when I'm being told to act. Did you shoot anyone? I did not shoot at anyone. Luckily yeah. he was out not of the way. 
Not that they time. Should get a gun. Ooh, I should get a gun. I don't know much about guns though. I I've only shot. What's to know? What's to know? <laughs> Kyle's a know? subject matter. Yeah, expert. but you've seen so many movies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Click. Kyle, what gun would you sit put her in? <laughs> uh, the phrasing was stupid, well, um, but it, uh, like a uh, you know, a little, you know, a, a trained um, young lady. I would want her to have like a compact clock that fits her hand right and holds Ooh. so many bullets that it it's just a, a noise making machine forever. Um, so yeah, one of those little compact locks. I don't know the, the model numbers anymore. They they introduce one every two or three years, and I don't keep up with it, obviously. But one yeah. of the little ones that holds a bunch of bullets. Compact Glock. All right, I'll write that down. Subcompact, even. But you want a bunch of bullets. That's the main thing. Lots of bullets. Nine mil, maybe? Because you're going to miss a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You just need to hit a couple times. Or just keep making noise. Like, if you're still shooting... um, I remember those Derringer pistols, those little breakdown things that you put two bullets in. Yeah. I I was like, what are you doing with that? Like, like, I have one in each sock. What, what if you go bang, bang, and now you're out, and they just start clubbing you to death because you tried to kill them, or you wounded them with that piece of shit? I want so many if, bullets. If you are in a, a self-defense gun situation, though, Mint, you can't be firing up in the air, or you'll no. end up like Boogie. You gotta shoot to kill. I Yeah, if I'm pointing a gun at somebody, it means I'm intentionally trying to kill them. That's the only reason to shoot a gun at some... point a gun at someone. Yeah. That's my you intention. Uh, sometimes don't you fire to one across to a... a a fifth grade <laughs> playground <laughs> just to <laughs> just to spook Frank Castle. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to let them know you're serious, you know. So in that case, you pointed out. Would would I hit them with the back of the gun first before yeah. shooting at them? Every time. See, that's called counting coup. In uh, in Native American <laughs> tribes, that was one of the one of the uh things you had to do to become a great plains chief. You had to count coup upon your enemy, ride up on him, slap the shit out of him, hit him with a coup stick. Those coup uh-huh. sticks are neat. Um, but but oh, yeah, I don't know what a sort coup of a stick is. Yeah, it's it's sort of this long um, um, stick on the end. It's bulbous, usually wrapped in like leather. A and maybe oh, that's not a like rock. A shillelagh, a Native American shillelagh. Thank you. Yes, I don't know what a shillelagh yeah, it could be is. A rock or, or some sort it's of what, like uh, implement strapped to Irish sinew people the used end. to fight with. Just like yeah. a hardened piece of wood. And gangs of New York. Each other. What is it called out. again? Zach, I'll pull up a picture. Oh, here we go. He's a head. No. Oh, yeah, there's <laughs> that. Yeah, that. yeah, that's yeah, a can, perfect weapon, actually. You can fuck somebody <laughs> up with that thing. Huh? Yeah, yeah that's so right. you can fuck up a lot yeah. of women. Yeah, you can, you can fuck up a ton of, a ton of women. With that thing. <laughs> I like how in your scenario, Mint, you seem like the primary aggressor, wanting to hit someone with your gun before you threaten them. Yeah. So maybe... <laughs> Maybe no are you mugging you. someone <laughs> in this scenario? Is that what the gun is for? Yeah, that's the ultimate benefit of a gun. You can you can rob any sized man. Mm. Is oh, that, that's, a cool that's stick. not how I imagined it, though. That's not what it I imagined like a either. Candy cane. It's like a stick with a rock strapped in the, around. Like in the movies, really they have axe. a exactly Woody. In, in the movies, I I see this stick, and on the end, like I said, there's it's very ceremonial feathers and such. It's decorated, but on the end, there's a hard bulbous part that seems to be part. You know, the stick was shaped like that to kind of cup something, but also there's been like a, yeah, something more like that. Oh. They ride along and they sort of do like a like an uppercut sort of whip, like slap the guy with it. That's counting coup. I might you have seen that like in steal. 1883. There was a guy who uh, did the the fucking, I don't remember what the other things you have to do to become a Great Plains chief or a Great Plains warrior or whatever uh, it was, but he did them in World War II. He he, uh, he he stole some horses from the Germans because that, that's one of them. You got to steal your enemy's horses. So he found like some German horses and ripped them off. Uh, apparently, he As rode up do. and yeah. killed a uh, counted coup on a German, slapped the shit out of him, and like rode away. Dude, um, if I ha- were a soldier in war in World War Two, World War One, any kind of war where there's no chance my feats were being recorded, I am lying <laughs> my ass off about what I achieve. It's like Taylor, where'd you go? And I'm not going to tell him I was having MRE diarrhea just out of sight <laughs> behind a tree. I'm going to be, I'm going to cover myself in my own blood and be like, huh, you don't want to, don't even go over there because there's so many dead, <laughs> dead krauts in the, he was midst. such a coward. He got a little poop on me. Yeah, Have you, uh... he's such a coward. He's so... <laughs> and look, he's got his vomit all over my shirt. <laughs> Cause he was so scared. And he really I'm fucked him up. I, am. So I really <laughs> fucked him up. They're like, all right, we're going to go confirm seen... your kills. I'm like, don't even worry about it. I don't, I'm not in it for, I'm not in it for the accolades boys. <laughs> I'm in it for the discounts at rental car companies for the next 70 years. <laughs> and Starbucks. Have you, uh, 
Have you ever seen Legends of the Fall? No. Uh-uh. It's a Brad Pitt movie. Uh, Anthony Hopkins is in a couple other people are in it too. But basically, it's right around the World War One time, and this rich ass white family lives on their huge estate. Um, out in like Montana or something, and the boy gets in his head that he's gonna go fight in World War One for freedom or whatever. And uh, but he's kind of the bitch made brother. So Brad Pitt, who was kind of halfway raised by uh, like an an Indian chief, is like gonna go to World War One to like look after homeboy. Right away, the sh- the the bitch made brother gets like mustard gassed and then tangled in the wire, and he's like blind. He's like help help, and the Germans like machine gun him up. Well, Brad Pitt oh, loses his shit, and he channels all that that like savage Native American shit that is uh, the, the other guy taught him, and he starts sneaking around at night, and he jumps into the foxholes and kills Germans with his with his hatchet, and he he's scalping them and cutting their hearts out and shit. It's wow. crazy. He rides back into camp all like covered in blood with German scalps, and swore, they send him home right away. <laughs> Dude, no wow, one covers intense. their their face in like the blood of their enemies post aid scare oh it wasn't no it was the blood of his brother because he couldn't get his brother's body home so he cut his brother's heart out and he's holding oh. the heart he's holding brad pitt's holding this heart and he's just having a meltdown looking at it and he takes the blood and like rubs it all over his face that's and then he upsetting goes, wow. if someone yeah. tried to comfort me they're like your brother was killed in the battle but here's his heart <laughs> i'd brad be pitt like cut it out what's wrong yeah. with you get out of here <laughs> he's he mailed it home he mailed it home. He's like, sorry, dad, I couldn't get like Billy out, you know, but here's his heart. So we can, you can bury it next to Sarah or whatever the fuck. Oh, but yeah, Brad Pitt goes hard in the paint in that movie. Oh, that it sounds like an intense movie. Uh, it's more of a love story. There, it's um, what? Yeah. Yeah. It's a big, long epic with, um, cause there's a girl who's like the love interest of both bitch made kid and Brad Pitt at one point, this whole love triangle. It's a long ass, uh, uh, movie, but the world. How War long is it? Awesome fucking two and a half hours probably oh wow nice and long it's-